it's time to start planting those transplant seeds. And so we've pulled aside the seeds that we're looking at uh, propagating right now or germinating. And that's our broccoli and our cabbage, which are cool season crops. And then we're also gonna go ahead and seed our tomatoes and a few of our peppers as well. And these are warm season crops. Now we're doing them at the same time, knowing that we're gonna be putting our cool season crops out in the garden around mid-March, which is toward the tail end of when you can. You can really plant cool season crops from mid-February to mid-March. Our warm season crops, while we're gonna go ahead and get those started, those won't go out until the garden until about mid-April. Now typically you wanna go ahead and start your seeds um, about five to seven weeks prior to when they will go out into the garden. So we've got our seeds pulled aside. Now, how do we plant them? Well, we all learned at an early age what a seed needs in order to grow, and that's a moisture, temperature, sunlight, and something to anchor that seed. Um, also, plants need nutrients, but at this point, the seeds don't have any roots, and so we're not concerned about nutrients at this point. Now, let's look at the soil first of all. What are we gonna need? Well, of course, we're planting in containers, so we never want to use any garden soil or topsoil. What we have here is a, a seedling mix, which is a very fine mixture, and so it'll really allow those new sprouts to come up through the mix pretty easily. So we've got this in here. Now, there's a couple of different containers that you can also use as well. Some people prefer to plant in something that's an open flat like this, where they'll just seed it. They might seed it into rows or they might scatter their seeds all over. But at that point, you're gonna have to then separate them and then pot those up. Some people prefer to put something in a bigger one. You might put a few seeds in here. Or you can also use peat pots, which are really nice because when you plant in these, these can be directly planted into the garden. You might just pull a little bit of the bottom to allow those roots to get growing into the garden soil. There's also some of these peat pots, which are little pelletized, compacted, dehydrated soil. And they're kind of got a little net around them. But once you put them in water, they'll expand and then you can put your seedling in there. So there's a couple of different options. What we're also using here today is a cell pack. Now cell packs, again, come in a range of cells. This is the one that's used in a more of a commercial situation that has 72 individual cells that you could plant. Now this is really great if you're ever gonna have to move a lot of plants at one time. So we have six different plants, so we have six different cell packs here that we're gonna plant up. Now the first thing that we wanna do before we introduce any seeds into our mix is water this pretty thoroughly. And that's so that we know the whole soil profile is saturated with water. Um, and we don't have to worry about watering it later and then running the risk of losing and washing away our seeds. So we're just gonna water this in. Now that you can see our potting soil is nice and saturated and you want to give that a little time to soak in because it can take some time to rehydrate it. Um, we're going to plant our seeds. A couple of different ways to make our holes. Some people just prefer using their finger to stick in there and, and with our seeds are pretty small so we're only going to go about half an inch. Um, or you can use a pencil to do that. Such as this. Or if you want, you can use a dibble board. A dibble board is just a, a dibble that has been attached to a board. So we've got six here um, that is made perfectly for a six pack. And we're just gonna press that down on there. And then we've got six uniform holes made for our seeds to go in. And the nice thing about this is we know their uniform depth um, versus their finger or pencil it might be a little bit uh, less uniform. Having a more uniform depth will also increase the germination uniformity as well. So we're gonna start with some Katarina cabbage, which is a nice uh, cabbage that makes small round four inch heads. Um, and you can see that these are really tiny seeds. Now the big question is how many seeds to put in each hole? It all depends on your confidence in the viability of that seed. If you have older seed, but you have a lot of it, um, the germination rate might have fallen. And so in that case, you might want to put two seeds per hole. Now, knowing that you're doing that, if both of them germinate, then you might have to clip one of those or pinch one back. And so you're sacrificing one plant if you have two seedlings come up. 
If you have newer seed, such as what we have here, and you have fewer of it, then you might want to put one seed in each hole so that you can grow as many plants as possible. And that's what we're doing here. We're just putting one seed in each hole. Now, the second thing that we're gonna plant here is um, a broccoli called artwork. And again, a very tiny seed that we're just gonna put one in each hole. Now we've got two different varieties planted and before we go any further, we wanna go ahead and get those labeled so we don't forget what is what. So first off, we planted some Katerina cabbage. And you wanna make sure that you always put the date that you have seeded those as well. So you kinda of know when to expect to see them to show up. And because we have six different varieties that we're planting here, we don't necessarily need to label each individual cell. We're just gonna label each packet. So we've got our seeds back filled and we're just gonna add a little bit of water on top of there to kind of settle that soil in around those new seedlings. Um, but we don't have to water too much because we know all of the media is nice and wet. All right, now that we've got it nice and moist, we wanna make sure to maintain that humidity and that moisture. And there's a couple of different ways to do that also. For something like this, you might have a, a plastic tray that you could put on top of it. Um, you just wanna be careful and make sure you check it quite often because these can get pretty hot. So as soon as those little seeds start sprouting, um, they can bake if you don't check it frequently. If you don't have a plastic lid like this, there's a couple of other home methods you could use, such as plastic wrap. You could just drape that over the top of it. Um, if you have plastic bags, you can also use those by covering your pot with a plastic bag and maybe putting a rubber band around it to secure it a little bit better. But that kind of acts as a, a tent or a greenhouse effect over those seedlings. Um, there's also another way you could do this and that's to plant in uh, one of those takeaway containers or something. Um, you could plant this, leave some room for your seedlings to germinate and then cover it with the lid like that. For a container like this, you wanna make sure to add some holes into the bottom so that it allows for drainage. But other than that, these work really great, so you might save those containers. Now that we've got ours planted, we're gonna go ahead and transfer ours to our growing station, our germination station, which is over here. We've got some nice grow lights above it, so it'll get plenty of light. If at home you don't have grow lights, you might look at a west or a south facing window where they're gonna get plenty of sunlight. And we also have some warming pads here. Now for germination, uh, most plants like a germination temperature around 70 to 80 degrees, and that's a consistent temperature because we wanna keep that soil profile nice and warm. If you keep your house around 70 degrees, that should work. But a heating pad just allows for a little more uh, control over that temperature. Now there is a difference between a germination temperature and a growing temperature. Once these start growing, the plant can allow for a little more flexibility in that temperature, just like it would be growing outside. Our nighttime temperatures dip a little bit, so it can handle that. So it's more for germination that we want 70 to 80 degrees. For more information on how to start your own transplants, check out this fact sheet. We hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.